Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless colossians 2 8 beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to christ madam speaker we're deeply honored to have you with us this morning i want to thank you for your presence with us and for the many ways over the years that you've engaged and supported our Georgetown community, it is always a pleasure to have you back on the Hilltop. And so um, it was always about helping other people, that we had that responsibility as a matter of our faith. Mm -hmm. Some of us would do that in a political role. I never intended to do so. But we are always, 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 um, I don't say told, just by example, knowing that you had to treat people with great respect, with great respect, we're all God's children, and that there's that spark of divinity in every person. Every one of us, when we come forward, when you leave here, there are like 10,000 angels escorting you because you have that spark of divinity. So that spark of divinity uh, also is in scripture is all us being created in the image of God. I always like to say, if we're going to pray in church on Sunday, or whatever day of the week, mm -hmm. let us avoid praying on people with an E the rest of the week, which some of these, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Yes, those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what they do. They, they talk about their faith and this or that. But then when we talk about feeding and sheltering and clothing and respecting and the rest of that, Matthew boom, 25. forget about that. <laughs> there are only two groups of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. Here's a question everyone needs to answer. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, or not affiliated with either party, do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus declares, They honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin, the Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The trans thing is now the challenge we have. And they're all God's children. 
They have their own dignity and worth, their own individuality, their own authenticity, and that's a beautiful thing for us to embrace. So here's three phrases again for putting faith into politics. You gotta know people, knowing people, uh, seeing a spark of the divine mm -hmm. in those people, and knowing they're all children of God, that LGBTQ are all initials that are beloved of God. What does it mean to be a child of God? First John 3.10 explains what it means to be a child of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. The life of a child of God will be completely different from the life of the unsaved. A child of God has a desire to live in a way that pleases the Heavenly Father, as we read in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Many people wrongly believe that everyone is a child of God. The Bible teaches us this is not true. We can only become His children when we believe in the name of Jesus Christ, as we read in John 1.12. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 2 Corinthians 5.17 describes what happens when we are born again into the family of God through faith in Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus taught that becoming children of God means we must experience a new birth, as we read in John 3.3. 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A child of God is no longer a child of the devil, and God sets about transforming his children through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we read in Romans 8, 13, and 14. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. If we do not begin to look like our Heavenly Father in word, desire, and action, we are most likely not really His, as we read in 1 John 2, 3, and 4. Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. Human beings were created to live as children of God. Sin marred that purpose and broke that bond with Him. Christ restores us to that original relationship. For all eternity, the sons and daughters of God will worship Him as one united family, as we read in Revelation 7, 9, and 10. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. A child of God lives for Him on earth, and eagerly awaits a future with Him in heaven, as we read in Philippians 3.20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is still a lot that we don't know about Monday's horrific and deadly mass shooting at a Nashville Christian school. But after police said the suspect was transgender, one thing is clear. Tennessee's already under siege transgender community is terrified. One advocate told NBC News, we are already fearing for our lives. Now it's even worse. The right wing moral panic over transgender people living their lives or seeking medical care or simply existing obviously predates the Nashville massacre. But some on the right are linking the tragedy to their raging nationwide crusade against transgender people in ways that are just dangerous and frankly evil. Marjorie Taylor Greene, one of the most embarrassing and shameful members of Congress, without any evidence whatsoever, claimed that transition hormones or medications for mental illness were a factor in the Tennessee shooting, and that, quote, everyone can stop blaming guns now. No, we won't. J.D. Vance, who sold his soul to Donald Trump for an Ohio Senate seat, shared his deep wisdom that, quote, if a trans shooter targeted a Christian school, there needs to be a lot of soul searching on the extreme left. Now, it is important to note that we do not know the shooter's motive, just a point of journalism. But in a particularly appalling act of hypocrisy, insurrection fist-bumping Senator Josh Hawley 
called for the Nashville shooting to be investigated as a hate crime against Christians. And last night, you know who, Fox's hate entertainment broadcaster Tucker Carlson of the I Hate Trump Passionately group text and lies about Dominion joined in. The trans movement is the mirror image of Christianity and therefore its natural enemy. The trans movement is targeting Christians, including with violence. Most Christian leaders in this country don't want to admit that. Admitting it might force them to take deeply unfashionable positions. Joining me now is Jim Wallace, founding director of the Center on Faith and Justice at Georgetown University, and Charlotte Clymer, transgender activist and former press secretary for the Human Rights Campaign. Thank you both for being here. You know, uh, Jim Wallace, it's, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you were available to talk today because there is this thing that's happening where it's kind of hard to avoid the, the sort of Christian element to it. There, there is a moral panic over LGBTQ folks in general, but trans folks in particular. Do you have any idea where that is coming from? LGBT. LGBTQ are initials that all stand for somebody who's beloved of God, made in the image of God. Let's be clear about that. This is all a distraction from hate. That's where they're using this for, a distraction. Uh, here's a moral fact. The leading cause of death now for our children and teenagers are guns. Yeah. Leading cause. Now, here's a moral conclusion from that moral fact. We're not protecting our children. If it were websites or poison food or some website, we would take care of it. Yeah. But a Republican says, there's nothing we can do. This is needed for our freedom. So what he's saying there is we will sacrifice our children for the sake of what he calls freedom. Mm -hmm. So let's ask, what kind of freedom is this? Yeah. For whom? from whom, this is a question he has to ask. You said worship in your opening segment there. There was an ancient god called Moloch. Leviticus talks about Moloch, who is a god that children were sacrificed to in flames. And the Bible is very tough on Moloch. Guns are our new Moloch. Yes. Yeah. Guns are the Moloch. We're sacrificing our children to Moloch. The leading cause of death among children is not guns, it's abortion. This man twisted scripture, as the Bible said that these false teachers would do in the end times. Guns are not our new Molech. Abortion is. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith, and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. There's a correlation between child sacrifice in the Old Testament and modern day abortion. The Bible contains the heartbreaking tale of child sacrifice practiced in the name of Molech, a god of the Ammonites. Molech worship was practiced by the Ammonites and Canaanites, who revered Molech as a protecting father figure. Images of Molech were made of bronze, and their outstretched arms were heated and red hot. Living children were then placed into the idol's hands and died there, or were rolled into a fire pit below. God gave the people of Israel a dire warning concerning child sacrifice and Molech worship, as we read in Leviticus 20 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Again, ye shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Sadly, King Solomon became involved in this horrendous practice, as recorded in 1 Kings 11, 6-8. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, 
who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Later, the evil king Manasseh offered his own son as a sacrifice, as did King Ahaz. The people of Judah also participated in this crime against their own sons, a sin so detestable that God said it had never even crossed his mind, as we read in Jeremiah 32, 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech, which I did not command them, nor did it come into my mind that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. In modern society, unprecedented numbers of children have been sacrificed at the hands of abortionists for the sake of convenience, immorality, and pride. Millions of babies have been sacrificed so that their parents can maintain a certain lifestyle. God hates hands that shed innocent blood, and we can be sure that God will judge this horrendous sin. White Christian nationalists are white nationalists, and Christian gets thrown in there. Mm -hmm. So they're white more than Christian. And I'm just saying, let's be Christian yeah. more than white. Yeah. So it is false worship. It is the worship of Moloch. And it is really, uh, it's a heresy. Let's call it a heresy. White Christian nationalism, which is behind all this, is li literally a biblical heresy. Yeah, I'm from the great state of Texas. I served in the military. I go to church every Sunday. My faith is very important to me. But God made me in her image. God made me in her image. Scripture contains approximately 170 references to God as the Father. In the Gospels alone, Christ uses the term Father in direct reference to God nearly 160 times. Obviously, Jesus Christ came in the form of a human man to die on the cross as payment for the sins of the world. Like God the Father, Jesus was revealed to humanity in a male form. God made me transgender. Deuteronomy 22.5 a woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. What do you mean, it feel when you have somebody like Michael Knowles say at CPAC, we need to eradicate transgenderism, and when somebody like Tucker Carlson says that transgender people are at war with Christians? I can't see Christ in their words. That's for damn sure. I can't see where the biblical principles of loving your neighbor and walking the walk with Christ that they can see. I, I can't see what they're seeing right now because that's not of Christ. It's not. Yeah, and, and I'll give you the last word. I'll be stronger. This is anti-Christ. Yes. This is anti-gospel, anti-Christ. And so this is a false worship we're confronting here. We've got to confront it theologically yeah. and not just politically. Amen. Politicians could do something if they wanted to. What's behind that is they are worshiping a false god and they are literally sacrificing all our children. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3:14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 10% of Americans have depression. They tell you it's all chemical imbalance in the brain. That's a lie. Some of it may be. But depression is also a product of living a life you're not supposed to be living. So it's kind of interesting that you're not hearing our leaders talk that much about black people anymore. Remember all the neoliberals were obsessed with telling you about black people? Why aren't they talking about black people anymore? Three years after George Floyd, actually the lives of many African Americans, real people, have gotten a lot worse. Following the 2020 Floyd riots, African American deaths by homicide reached levels never seen before in this country. Why is that? But no one, no one in the Democratic Party is because they don't care. They don't have to care because they have a new class of victims to exploit for political power. Out with black people, in with transgenderists. We're going to exploit their suffering to become more powerful. And of course, big corporations are taking the lead as they always do. Bud Light just honored a man who dresses up like a little girl called Dylan Mulvaney. Watch this. I got some Bud Lights for us. So I kept hearing about this thing called March Madness. And I thought we were all just having a hectic month, but it turns out it has something to do with sports. And I'm not sure exactly which sport, but either way, it's a cause to celebrate. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Do you think that the people in charge care about that person or any transgender person? Really, if they did, they might ask questions like, is the suicide rate among young people who are getting hormone treatments rising or falling? Because if you cared, you'd want to know that. They don't want to know. They don't care. You think Sandy Cortez even thinks about that? No. The point is getting power from the suffering of others. And if you've decided you're another sex, you're definitely suffering on many, many levels. Point that out and you get attacked. That happened to our friend Billboard Chris in Canada. He went to a trans rally in Vancouver on Friday. Here's what happened to him while there. You suck. You suck. F you. F you. You're not wanted. F you. You're, you're a f idiot. F you. 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 So who's the aggressor there? Well, it wasn't the man who calls himself Billboard Chris. He was assaulted. And when he reported his assault to the air quotes here, police, the police refused to investigate. Within seconds, I was surrounded, not allowed to walk freely, pushed. As you can see, my nose is bleeding. They just walked up to him and assaulted him. Where's the video? <laughs> I have it on my camera, but I'm, Are you I'm gonna filming show it right to now. Me? Yeah, I can, I can show it to you. How about you show it to me? 
Are you going to do something about it if I do? Uh, if I actually see an assault and not a claim of an assault. How do you think that happened, ma'am? You think he did it to himself or something? Uh, people can do these things to hurt themselves on purpose. <laughs> you don't honestly <laughs> think that this man just hurt himself, himself on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, the rosy-cheeked face of tyranny. <laughs> She's not the only one. The police chief, the deputy police chief, rather, Howard Chow of Vancouver, has taken her side. He says he's appalled, not that people are being bashed in the face for their political views, but because some people don't like the fact the police didn't respond. He hasn't condemned the militants who attacked that man. That's because in Canada, as in this country, militants with the right cause, the trans cause, can do whatever they want. They can even kill Christian children in school, and they're, they're the victims. Biden's new normal is everyone must be accepting of homosexual behavior. That everyone must accept that a boy or girl can change their gender. That there is nothing wrong with murdering a baby in the womb. Anyone that does not go along with Biden's new normal is considered an extremist. A community college in North Carolina now looking to potentially revise their rules after a drag queen straddled a girl during a performance that students as young as 14 were invited to attend. Okay, so this is a family show. What the hell is going on in that North Carolina school? It's always a great question. So this community college during a Pride event had a drag queen, and as we just saw in that video, that drag queen touched a child inappropriately, which raises the question, what policies need to be reconsidered at this school to protect children from adults touching them inappropriately? That's shameful that there are adults standing there in the room and no one is doing anything. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 13. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved.
Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.